Today we're going to look at the principle of superposition, which describes the way that waves interfere with each other. We can talk about wave pulses. Wave pulses, if you were making a wave pulse in a slinky, you'd just oscillate your hand up and down once. So you'd oscillate up and then down, and you'd produce a pulse that looks something like that in your slinky. So that's a pulse with a single oscillation. If you oscillate your hand back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you generate, of course, a, what we call a, a wave train. I usually just call this a wave, and I refer to that as a pulse. Now, what happens when two pulses collide? So if I've got a pulse coming this way, and it collides with another pulse, let's make it a little bigger, like that, What's going to happen? Are they going to bounce off each other, in which case the red one would end up going back, and the white one would also reflect back? Or do they pass through each other, in which case the smaller white one would end up on the right, and the larger red one would end up on the left? And then, well, what's it going to look like when the two waves are on top of each other? I've got the red one right here and the white one right about here. Well, what's the slinky going to look like when, during that brief instant in time when the two pulses are on top of each other? Well, let's take a look. Here's two waves, two pulses. Okay, so they definitely pass through each other. The smaller one moved to the right the whole time. So that's number one observation. They pass through. Second observation, they seem to add up when they're right on top of each other. You're getting a bigger pulse. And in fact, when they add up like that, that's called constructive interference. And here's some strobe photographs of constructive interference. So we've got two pulses that are upwards. They're in the same direction. And when they get on top of each other right here, you get a much bigger amplitude. And uh, so that's constructive interference when the two pulses are in the same direction. But in the second case, we've got one pulse that's up and one pulse that's down. And they get closer to each other. And then right here, you'll notice that the waves cancel out. And that's called destructive interference. So when the pulses are in opposite directions, they can inter they can destroy each other for an instant. But that energy is still stored in the spring. There will be all kinds of uh, tensions in the spring, uh, even though it looks flat. And then that, that energy comes back again. And we c Well, the energy would never left. It was just tied up in a different way. But then we can see it as pulses again after the interference. Now, as it so happens, both longitudinal and transverse waves can undergo constructive and destructive interference. And it gives us kind of some funny results. OK, so in this first case, we've got uh, two transverse wave trains. They're supposed to be identical, and they'd both be moving in the same direction. So we can imagine those being superimposed directly on top of each other and adding up and we'd get constructive interference, we'd get a much bigger amplitude. And that shouldn't be too surprising. Uh, it just means you've got two waves adding up. What's a little more surprising is that that will work with, say, sound waves, which are longitudinal waves, so that a compression, these are two sound waves traveling in the same direction, right on top of each other. So if we've got two compressions right on top of each other, of course, we're going to get a super compression right here. And where we have a rarefraction, those two on top of each other, makes it extra rare in a sense right here. So we end up with once again a bigger amplitude. Now waves can also cancel each other out. So now we've got two waves that are traveling along, same direction, right on top of each other, but now everything cancels out. And so where we had two waves before, we can't see any waves at all. And this can happen with sound waves as well, where, say, a compression lies on top of a rarefraction. The two waves are right on top of each other, moving together. Then, of course, you're just going to get sort of average density of molecules there. 
neither a compression or a refraction and so you're going to get a cancellation there and this is a very surprising result for sound waves that two sound waves could cancel each other out so that you can't hear anything and yet all that energy will still be stored within the wave so now let's consider the case that in the last case we we were looking at waves that are traveling in the same direction. Now we're going to take waves that are traveling in opposite directions and pass them through each other. So we got one wave moving this way and we're going to take an identical wave and pass it through so that they're going to interfere with each other. And the question is what's going to happen? And let's take a look. So up here we've got our wave moving to the right Here's the identical move, same frequency, same amplitude, moving to the left. And we get some interesting results. For instance, at this point and at other points, we have these fixed points with no amplitude at all, and they're called the nodes. And if I draw a, a line straight upwards, you can see that along that line, it'll be crest on trough and then it'll be trough on crest, etc. And it always cancels out at that point. This point here, it's got a maximum oscillation. It's oscillating with an amplitude of 2A, twice the amplitude that we have up here for either one of these waves. And we call this part, we call that an anti-node. Notice here is that whereas the crests are moving along up here for the individual waves, we don't have any crests moving along down here. There's no movement of crests. So the, the energy is standing still. So we call this a standing wave. Also called a stationary wave. That's because the energy is does not propagate. Well, how are we going to draw that pattern? We don't have moving ink, so how are we going to draw it on our paper? Well, this is the way we draw it. We just start out with a wave, and then we usually do a dotted wave that's opposite to that wave, and then these dots here, they're called the nodes, and these are called the anti-nodes. But keep in mind a few features. Say this anti-node would be coming down right now. And the adjacent anti-node would be going up right now. So the two anti-nodes are exactly out of phase. When we say that they're out of phase, that means they have exactly the opposite phase. They're doing exactly the opposite thing. When one's going down, the other's going up. The mathematical pr principle behind all of this is called the principle of superposition. And it's very simple. It simply says the displacement at any position will equal the sum of the displacements at that position. So let's pick out a position. I'm going to move this gray line over here and I can pick out any position I want. Let's go right here. So this is the so let's consider the displacement of the red wave. That's its displacement and that's 1 to about 2.5 positive 2.5. Displacement of the green wave is negative and it's going to be about negative say 1.2 so now I, I'm supposed to sum those dis two displacements I'll get 2.5 minus 1.2 and I'll get 1.3 as my displacement so my resultant wave would be right here with a displacement of positive 1.3 and I'll put a dot there and then what I do if I want to add up 
the two waves and find the resultant is I'll, I'll pick out some key points and put dots. So for instance, right here I've got two zero displacements, so my resultant has to be zero. This is a fairly easy point. It's going to be negative 3 minus 1.8 or about negative 4.8, so it's going to be way down here. And I can then start to draw my resultant wave between the dots and continue this process. Uh, here's a point, uh, this would be positive 1.8 plus 3 or positive 4.8, so it's going to reach a high point right there. And I would, let's take this point here, it's going to be positive 2 plus positive 2, that would be a positive 4, so we'd come down like that. And then we'd continue that whole process. And if you do that, you should find, this is a little wobbly, but the resultant wave is this black one here. That's what the, say the slinky would look like at an instant in time. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.